Hi, it's Ian, and welcome back to my 30 days of Tycho skills. Today is day three, and I'm talking about this app called GapClick. It's a metronome app, but has a fancy, few fancier features, and I think it's very useful for the practice of developing our internal sense of pulse and strengthening our, strengthening our uh, concept of subdivisions and evenness. So uh, it was developed by Benny Greb, the great drummer uh, and educator. And uh, I think there's a lot of different ways we can we can play with this app. So just to give you a little uh, oversight into this or insight into this, here is the interface on my iP iPad. And very basically, there is the first measure that has something simple, and then the second measure that has something different. And we can pro program different things on the first and second measure independently. The idea is that uh, instead of just playing to the metronome, just constant quarter note beeps like normal, um, it's challenging us by going back and forth between, for example, on beats and off beats. So here I have the first measure being programmed with quarter notes. The second measure has uh, offbeat eighth notes on it. So it's just going to go back and forth uh, between downbeats and upbeats, and it'll test to see if I can play um, and not get thrown off when the second measure has upbeats. So I'll just try to improvise on this pad um, with this setting just to see how it goes. And three and four and Okay, so that's not too challenging for me with this kind of material. Um, if I played some other material or maybe changed the tempo, I might have to uh, practice more uh, on certain patterns. So, for example, maybe if that was too simple for me, I might try, instead of being on the ands on the second measure, it would be on the E or the second to sixteenth note. So it would be one, two, three, four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. That's the click pattern. Uh, it gets quite a bit more difficult because now we're, we're uh, trying to hear this metronome beep on a more uh, detailed E part. So we have to think in terms of um, being really understanding of where that E is placed within what we're playing. So maybe I'll start with something simpler. It might just be even playing quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, maybe like some simple G pattern like ten teke ten teke. Um, I might start with simple patterns like that until I feel comfortable enough, and then maybe I'll try to add complexity and improvise over that. So let's try. Let's try. First measure is downbeat. Second measure is the E's. E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and a. Okay, so obviously uh, the complexity just went quite a bit raised compared to just playing the ands uh, like I did in the earlier earlier version. Um, of course, we can keep going with complexity. There's different uh, places we can put that second uh, beep, uh, including triplet variations in different parts, um, or the ah. It would be one, two, three, 
four, one e and dot two e and dot three e and dot four. That's where you hear the click. So we have to be be very understanding of where that a uh is, and then uh, be able to hear that, know where it is, and adjust with any um, anytime there's a discrepancy between what the beat that you're feeling and what you're hearing with the beep. We have to readjust. That's something that's um, kind of uh, not too difficult at all if you're used to playing with just a downbeat, but this uh, added extra challenge gives us that uh, ability to practice and be very comfortable with that. So uh, it's a really great tool, very, very simple, um, but I find it's it's quite fun to play along with and to challenge ourselves. Um, if I was going to challenge myself even more, uh, I would switch the first measure to be instead of hitting every downbeat, uh, it's only going to hear it go on one. So it's going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If, it, if I left it on the E. Okay, so that's quite challenging because there's the metronome is continuing, but I don't hear anything on two, three, four. And then now I have to adjust and listen for that E on the second measure. We'll see how that goes. Okay, clearly that's something I have to keep practicing and to get more comfortable with this tempo and the kind of things that I was trying to play against this. Um, the idea is that right now my first measure is not always consistent. So when I get to the second measure, the placement of that E is sometimes where I expect it, sometimes it's not there. So um, something like this is takes a lot of concentration and for me it's fun to, to work through this and if you do this kind of thing every day, you'll see definitely see a uh, improvement in your kind of internal clock, and you just feel much more confident as you develop these skills and you start to apply them to a more real-world um, musical scenario. So anyway, uh, check out something like this. Of course, you could make up your own uh, programs and come up with your own different ideas, but an app like this makes it very simple to try different combinations and develop your musicality and, and uh, kind of solid rhythm concept. So anyway, that was today and we'll see you on the next one.